Greetings, curious acolytes of the galaxy, and welcome back to the Archives. The pantheon of past Sith Lords is typically ordered from least to greatest in terms of power and their accomplishments. While many Sith Lords stand out as being quite formidable in their day, only a few actually stand out as those who have truly left their eternal mark on the galaxy. And in our opinion, there are two specific Sith Lords that come to mind when talking about those who have achieved ultimate power and nearly completed their total objective. Those two Sith Lords would be Darth Sidious and Darth Vitius respectively. Both of these men have held the exclusive title of Emperor. Both of them held almost complete rule of the galaxy at one point in time or another, and both have been considered the most powerful of their day. And both have gone down in history as some of the most depraved beings that have ever spawned out of the galaxy's darkest depths. Evil is the word that comes to mind when describing these men, or beings, and there are a laundry list of reasons as to why. Ruthless conquests, cruel treatment of all around them, and manipulation of the people closest to them. Both of these monsters have accomplished the task and goal of manipulating the heroes of their day into merciless Sith and killers, with Sidious corrupting Anakin Skywalker the Chosen One and Vitiate doing the same to Revan. But despite their similarities, they are not as equal as they seem. One of these monsters is far more wicked than the other, and in this archive entry, we are going to open up a few holocrons Jedi and Sith alike and explain why Darth Vitiate is by far the most vile emperor between the two. The whole crux of this decision comes down to one thing, the individual reasons why they wanted to rule the galaxy in the first place. Their ultimate goal, Chief Palpatine from childhood had always held the idea that those who are stronger and smarter than most other people should have the right to rule because it was up to the superiors to lead the rest of the galaxy to greatness. The very thing that made young Chief Palpatine rebel from his father, Kasinga Palpatine, was because he thought of his father as weak. Sheev knew that House Palpatine had the potential to be the most powerful and influential family on all of Naboo. Only had his father had this find to elevate their house to that position. This was the state that Darth Plagueis found Sheev in as a very young man, sensing Sheev's ambition. Plagueis would interrogate the Palpatine boy to see exactly what his aims were. Sheev revealed that he didn't just want freedom, he wanted to rule. He didn't care who he had to kill, manipulate, or pay off. The entire reason Sidious wanted to be elevated to a place of royalty was because he held the passionate belief that he truly was the only one strong enough to lead the people of his planet, and as a result, the further galaxy, to a better future and tomorrow. Palpatine truly despised the Jedi, not so much because of their ideological beliefs, but because of how much the galaxy relied on them. The way the Galactic Senate would pine for the Jedi's favor and help in every situation reeked of weakness to the young boy. Palpatine revealed that he wouldn't have such a problem with the Jedi if they would do what he thought they should have done long ago. We talked before about why Palpatine hated the Jedi so fervently. The biggest and most prominent reasons was simply because they had all this power and yet did nothing with it. A single Jedi could rule an entire planet as a god, and they chose not to, which confused and disgusted Sheev. Palpatine knew how strong he was in the Force, and wanted to use that power to bring the galaxy into a place of security and total prosperity. When Sidious's galactic empire was instated, there were many citizens who lived in poverty to be sure. However, if one were to walk close to the Emperor and in the right circles, meaning if you were truly what one would call a citizen of the Empire, then you had privileges and you lived a very good life. These loyal to the Emperor were rewarded with stable housing and many opportunities as well as good income. Comparing this to now Darth Vitiate, who after establishing the Eternal Empire, left the Sith completely and desired to elevate himself, not the Sith, to the position of a god by attempting to literally destroy everything else. Starting at the beginning, Tenebrae, who would become Sidious, was practically born malevolent and evil. As a six-year-old, he killed his father through the Force and tortured his mother for months on end before enslaving his entire home planet. When he was just 10 years old, he managed to cut off a Sith Lord from the Force and would regularly torture and kill his subjects to feed upon their suffering. Many years later, the ritual he performed to acquire all of his monstrous amounts of force energy not only killed 8,000 members of his fellow Sith, but left his homeworld of Nathema, a grey husk completely devoid of the force itself. All force sensitives who visited this place would soon feel themselves growing insane from being in this place for too long, and in this place completely void of all color and life. Lord Scourge, a very powerful and faithful Sith upon visiting Nathema, called it a true abomination and afterwards changed his loyalty from the Emperor. Vitiate had the idea of doing the exact same thing, only this time to the entire galaxy, steadily growing his power until he reached godhood and destroyed the galaxy as we know it, and then moving on to the rest of the universe, the unknown. 
Yes, Sidious too was a madman just like Vitiate, but even he held back on cases such as this. Remember, it was Darth Sidious who had to keep Vader from killing so many of their people. It was Darth Sidious who said the words, I do not wish to rule over a galaxy of the dead. But from what we have gathered, that was exactly what Darth Vitiate desired. When it comes to their individual acts of evil, they both proved to be right alongside each other. Both the Eternal Empire and the Galactic Empire are responsible for horrendous deeds and the deaths of billions. However, I think the separation between the two comes down to their ultimate endgame. Palpatine had planned to simply rule the galaxy forever by any means necessary. Vitiate simply desired to reduce it to dust if it meant he could live eternally. We are by no means attempting to justify anything that Darth Sidious did, as of course he was an extremely evil man who was essentially irredeemable. In the end, both of these men were extremely evil and had evil deeds in mind. But what makes Darth Vitiate so much more terrifying is in opposite to Darth Sidious's famous quote that he did not wish to rule over a galaxy of the dead. Dead. This is exactly what Vitiate wanted. Darth Sidious wanted those around him to know how powerful he was, and they wanted them to fear him. This is where he gained his pleasure, just as he said as a young boy about the Jedi. Those that commanded the Force could be a god to any world that did not command it. Darth Sidious wanted those around him to know that he was a god, and that he was their ultimate emperor. But in contrast, this idea to Darth Vitiate did not matter. It did not matter to Vitiate who knew he was a god, or who knew how powerful he was. He just wanted to be elevated to that status, and in his mind, the only reason to truly elevate to godhood was to command death entirely, destroying the entire galaxy itself to serve his own ego. But my friends, we now would love to hear your thoughts on this holocron and topic. Who do you personally believe was more evil? Or do you simply refuse to rank evils? If you disagree with our assessment, be sure to leave a comment down below and explain why. As a quick reminder, as the holidays quickly approach, we have a massive sale on the Star Wars merch page if you're interested, where you can get t-shirts, hoodies, keychains, and much more 50% off. As well as if you use code WAVE at checkout, you'll get an additional 15% off your entire order. That's 65% off. So my friends, now is the time if you are interested. As always though, Acolytes of the Force, thank you so much for your support. May the Force be with you in all of its forms, and have a great day.